Good afternoon, participants. My name is Victoria, and I am the facilitator for the information session today for Westminster College. Don will be a presenter. I do start and stop the webinar. I do want to let you know that even though you don't have camera or microphone, you can communicate through the Q&A feature at the bottom of the screen. If there's something that you miss or you want to revisit some information, the session is being recorded and it will be made available on oacac.org within a week. If you want to go on that website as well, you can look for other universities that are doing information sessions. I will turn it over now to Dawn, and I hope that you learn a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. As the facilitator said, my name is Dawn Crutcher, and I work here in the admission office Thank you so much for taking some time to learn a little bit about Westminster. First of all, Westminster is located in New Wilmington, Pennsylvania. And for those of you not familiar with us, we are near the Grove City Outlets in Pennsylvania. So nine miles from there, an hour from Pittsburgh, um, about an hour and a half from Cleveland, near Newcastle, PA, Hermitage, Sharon, um, about a half an hour from Youngstown, Pennsylvania, or Youngstown, Ohio, if any of these uh, landmarks ring a bell. So we are a small private liberal arts school with about 1,200 students. So this will break down to class sizes of about 17 people. So as you get into your classes, um, classes will be small. Your professors will know you by name, they um, normally pass out home phone numbers or cell phone numbers, so you can get in touch with your professors when you do have questions. Um, I would say our top majors are business, biology, English, music, public relations, teaching, and nursing. So in some of these courses, you may have closer to 20 to 25 students, but like I said, an average would be about 17 students per class. And I'll talk a little bit more about the majors in just a few moments. Um, like I said, we're a small private liberal arts school. Um, we have lots to do on our campus. So we probably have everything that you're looking for. Um, we have on any given day, anywhere from 80 to maybe 100 organizations on campus. Um, sports are big. We are division three for anyone thinking of athletics. Music and music is big on our campus. Whether you are a music major or a minor, or you just want to participate because you've played an instrument or you sing in the choir, we do have a place as the college musically for you as a major or just a participant. So for example, our marching band is very, um, very popular and like I said, big on campus. Um, we still have things like theater, we have special interest groups, we have clubs and organizations that are centered around your major, um, we study abroad, we have sororities and fraternities, so again, lots to get involved with. So if you actually come to Westminster and you say, well, you don't have this club or organization, all you need to do is find a few people who are interested to start that club or organization, and then you will petition the Student Government Association, and we can you can start a club or organization. Um, and let me say that Student Government Association is very big on campus as well. So I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with all the clubs and activities that are basically on campus. And if you're bored, I will tell you right now, it is because you are choosing to be bored. You are sitting in your room and you're not getting involved. Okay, so that's a little bit about the campus. Let me get back to the majors. So I told you what the popular majors are. Um, let me talk a little bit about the curriculum because I said that we are a liberal arts school. So that means you're gonna take classes outside of your major. The first third of our curriculum would be the liberal arts classes. And these are going to be classes like um, foreign language. You have to take English, you take a math course, a lab science, a social science. That's something like history, um, psychology, philosophy, something like that. And then um, there's some classes like music appreciation, 
there's a class called inquiry and this is a, lit a literature type of class that will help you to learn how to think more critically and more analytically and these are skills that you already possess but we are really going to hone these skills for you um, i think i mentioned kind of all of them a foreign language you do have to take one more semester of a foreign language so again these are classes that are really called the liberal arts. And then the next third would be your major field of study. So if you're coming to Westminster to study biology, these would be your biology courses. Okay. Um, the next third would be what's called electives. And these are classes that could just be fun, um, things that you wanna do, these are just electives. Now, if you come to Westminster and say you want to major in biology, but you want to minor in psychology, then you would use the last to actually, um, pick up the, the minor. Okay, so that's what you would be doing at this time. When you come to Westminster, you would have an advisor. So somebody who would help you plan your schedule, talk about your major, make sure you're staying on track. Um, so this is really, really important. So everyone is going to have a, an advisor on campus to work with you. Okay, so that's a little bit about the curriculum. If you're out there and, you know, you're thinking, hmm, you know, I really don't know what I want to major in. So that's fine. I would just tell you if you need to be undecided, that is perfectly fine. But if you think that you have a major, um, I would encourage you to go ahead and declare that major. So what would happen is you would get an advisor from your field, from day number one, who will start working with you and helping you to plan your schedule. If the major is not what you want, you will know that probably in one to two classes. And then you can change your mind, get a new advisor, and the classes that you took already will move over and become electives. So you haven't wasted any time. Now I will caution you, let's say you can start with decide, hmm, maybe I wanna be a teacher. You don't want to have this epiphany junior year. That's a little bit late. But um, if you start taking some of those introductory classes, I think your first or second semester, you are going to know, yes, this is the major for me. Okay, and then like I said, if it's not the major, you can change out of it and those classes will become electives. And then just to show you how flexible we are at Westminster, this is an advantage of a small private school. Um, I know students with a major and a minor. So maybe you want a major in biology and you want a minor in psychology, or you can have a major in two minors. You could have a major in three minors. And I do have and know a handful of students who double major. So they are coming here and they have two degrees. So again, all you need to do is just let your advisor and the registrar know of your interest, and then we will work with you to accommodate um, the things that you wanna do. And to even give you more options, we have something called an interdisciplinary major. And this is really neat because it really gives you the flexibility. So let's say you want to major in physics and art. Physics and um, chemistry or physics and math, we can have you pull two different areas together and fuse them together. So this wouldn't be as stressful as a double major, but you would be getting two different areas pulled together. So we call those an interdisciplinary major. So again, just more options and more things for you to do. Okay, so those are, that's a little bit about our majors. Um, and again, you know, if you're already thinking of something, go ahead and declare that major so that you can get an advisor from your field from day number one. Okay. So with that, let me move on and talk about scholarships. So at Westminster College, we will automatically screen you for a merit-based scholarship when you make an application to the school. So there are not two separate processes. So sometimes at other schools, you have to apply for admission and then turn around and apply for a scholarship. When you make your application to Westminster, we will automatically consider you for a merit-based scholarship. 
you get into the college, you will know what scholarship you are receiving. So just to give you an, a rough idea, our scholarships range from about $16,000 to $24,000, okay? So that's a nice chunk of, of monies. Um, tuition fees and room and board is $50,100, and we are the same regardless if you live in Ohio or New York. I know some schools have um, all in and out of state tuition, so let's it's the same for everyone, no matter where he or she lives. So my suggestion to you right now is gather information of the schools, you know, follow up. If you're a senior, maybe make an in-person visit, and I'll talk about ways to visit in a few minutes. Um, but don't, don't weed out of school based on the cost. $50,000 is a lot of money. It is, but at the end of the day, it doesn't mean that that's what you're paying. So like I said, our scholarships range from $16,000 to $24,000, and then we have financial aid on top of it. So once you and your parents complete the free application for federal student aid, and if you are a senior, you should have done this or you should be doing this now. If you're interested in Westminster College, our school code is 003392. So that is the code that you're going to put down to identify interest in Westminster College. And again, that is 003392. And once you put that down, the information will automatically come to our uh, secure database. And then after you get admitted to the school, our director of financial aid will start comprising a financial aid package for you. And so we'll see if there's any other grants, any other scholarships, um, student loans, that is a form of financial aid. So that will probably be in there as well. And we'll just send you a list of everything that you qualify for. And we will subtract all everything that you're getting from $50,100. And then that will be your out of pocket expense. So when it's all said and done, you will actually see what it will cost you to, to come to Westminster College. And you will have an admission counselor who will be working with you, especially when those financial aid packages go out. So don't worry about all of this right now. You'll have somebody um, that you can call with questions or mom and dad can call with questions. But I just wanted to give you an overview of what's going to happen. Okay, so that's a little bit about the financial aid process. Um, so just keep in mind, there's merit and there's financial aid. Well, what do you need to be admitted? So let me talk about that. Um, typically, we want to see two years of the same foreign language. We want to see three college prep math courses. So algebra one, algebra two, trig is fine. We would want to see two sciences with a lab. So chemistry or biology or chemistry one and chemistry two. And then we look at your English courses. And then we look at what's called social science. These will be classes like psychology, government, economics, civics, history, all of those type of courses. Um, to give you a sense of what we're looking for, at Westminster, I would say our typical student has around a 3.3 or 3.4 grade point average, an 1100 on the, or I should say 11, around 1180 math and verbal on the SAT. And for people like you in Ohio who take ACT, we do look at about a 24. Now, because of COVID-19, we can and we are test optional. So if you have found yourself in a situation, especially my seniors, and you haven't been able to take a standardized test, um, don't shut out and talk too much. You can just apply test optional. Okay, so that is an option for you. So that is a little bit about um, you know, what we're looking for in, you know, our, our typical student. Um, so where should you be in the timeline right now? So if you're a senior, you should be making your application to some of the schools, doing the financial aid process, and waiting to hear back from your schools. If you're a junior, you're probably just starting this process. You will probably start signing up for AT ACT exams. Um, maybe make a couple visits to your schools 
and then um, you know really start starting the process next August. So it doesn't hurt to visit a campus, whether that's in person or virtually. Westminster College has a lot of options for you. So if you're ready to make an in-person visit, all you need to do is go to our website, www.westminster.edu and click on visit. And you will see all of the different ways that you can make a visit to Westminster College. If you're not ready to make an in-person visit or not feel comfortable, we do offer virtual sessions with counselors be able to talk one-on-one -on -one like we're doing. And you can even request to meet with a faculty um, or someone on campus or someone from our exploratory major. So that's an option for you. And then if anyone is really, really interested, I would say this Saturday, which is November 7th, we are hosting another virtual opportunity to do an open house. So this is nice, especially maybe for my juniors who or a little bit interested, but you know, not sure, just sign up at westminster.edu slash open house. And then we will email you a link and then you will sign on. You will get a chance to meet our president, our vice president for academic affairs. And then um, you'll actually get a chance to talk to current students, current, excuse me, current students to see why they love Westminster, why they chose it some of the things that they're involved in. Um, so that's gonna be fun. And then right after that, we will move into a, a, a panel um, or of different breakout sessions with faculty. So if you're out there and you're thinking, I would like to talk to pre-med, we will have breakout sessions where we can put you in small breakout rooms where you can meet some of the professors from pre-med biology department. And if you say, well, I would like to meet with someone for math. You will come back to the main room and we will put you in the math breakout session. So you will really be able to talk and engage with, um, with the faculty. And then for any moms or dads who, this is your first son or daughter to college and you're thinking, well, what am I doing with this financial aid process? There will be a financial aid presentation that you can sit through to learn a little bit more about this process. Um, so it's gonna be a good time. So again, westminster.edu slash visit and then open house. But if you're not available this Saturday, then that's okay. I'm just gonna encourage you to come visit at another time. And then also, you know, sign up, um, just go to westminster.edu slash admissions and you can confirm your interest if you're not on our mailing list. This way we can keep in contact with you and you know, send you email invitations. Sometimes we will have virtual um, academic sessions in the evening. So we have some of those. So again, there is a wealth of ways that you can visit Westminster College. And then, you know, lastly, don't be shy. If you have any questions, reach out to the general um, miss at westminster.edu. That's the general inbox. And you can leave your question and it'll be forwarded to the correct person to answer your question and we can get back to you. Or if, again, if you just go onto our website, um, westminster.edu slash admissions, you can find your admission counselor there. Or if you wanted to meet with a faculty person, just go to westminster.edu slash academics. And then you're going to click on the subject that you're thinking about. So let's say it's history, you click on history. And then in the right hand corner, you will see the chair of that department. You'll see other faculty. You will see classes that you would need to take in order to be a history major and you know get a lot of information. So I'm gonna stop right there because I talked to you a little bit about um, where we were located, activities and organizations. I talked a little bit about the majors, scholarships, financial aid, I talked about what you need to do. Um, and also too, let me uh, go back there since I'm thinking of it. So I talked to you about making your application. You can either apply to Common App, we accept Common Application, or you can go to our website, apply using our website. It is free online and we just need your high school transcript. So talk to your guidance counselor and he or she will send that over. 
we would need your test score if you plan to submit them. But like I said, we are test optional. And then if you are submitting test scores, we do not need a writing sample. So the essay would be optional. You would not have to do that if you are submitting test scores. But if you're not submitting test scores, then we would actually need a little writing sample from you. And you don't have to stress out if you've written something nice for an English course, go ahead and submit that. But typically people just talk about, you know, a challenge that they've overcome or, you know, their favorite class or their favorite teacher, somebody who has helped them. So we welcome a wide variety of subjects. But let's just say you didn't do well your ninth grade, your 10th grade year for whatever reason. And now, you know, you're finding yourself in a situation where you're applying to colleges and maybe your grade point average is a little lower than you would like, that would be a great um, essay to explain to the decision committee, you know, what happened, you know, why your grades are low or your test scores. And you can talk about like what you've done to overcome or now that you're looking at college, you know, you're buckling down, you're taking some classes in the summer. Um, that can also be something good to write for an essay. Okay, so um, different ways we are already accepting applications. So if anybody wants to do early action, the deadline for that is November 15th. So if you get your application in by November 15th, we're going to have a financial aid package um, and your acceptance to you by, by Christmas. And then you do not have to give us your answer until May 1st. Okay, so November 15th is the deadline, and then you don't have to commit until May 1st. If you're just doing right now rolling admission, maybe right now you don't have time to think about college. COVID-19 is just too real, and you want to think about this process in December, you can apply rolling admission, and we start that December 15th, and then you wouldn't have to commit to us until May 1st. Okay, so with that, I am going to pause and see if there are any questions and concerns or you want me to kind of give you more details about. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there and let me see. You can just put your question and answer in the chat. Well, Dawn, it looks like, oh, we're right in my glare. What's going wrong with my camera? Oh, there you go. Oh, where am I? Oh, oh okay, there you go. <laughs> well, yeah, that was, a, yeah, that was, that was a serious glare. I know, it's the time of day. But yeah. it looks like we don't have any questions. And I do thank you for stepping in and doing our presentation for Westminster today. As you can see on the screen share, there, once I end the webinar, there's a brief four question survey that I'd love for you to answer. There will be a recording of this on the oacac.org website, as well as the ability to sign up for some additional information sessions that will be available. I thank you very much for your time and I hope you learned a lot. Have a great day.